morning guys and welcome to the Monday morning sidewalk this will probably be the last time we do video on a Monday um, I'll get to that later hope you guys had a great holiday it's Monday the 5th of January the Lord's year 2015 we've had an interesting uh, holiday of course with travels from all the way from here in North Texas down to Mexico and back uh, my family uh, the bulk of them live in uh, Houston area and so while I was in Houston last week I did get a chance to go fish the uh, Tom Ball Country Club there in Tom Ball, Texas. Thank you very much. Uh, they uh, had so much rain there in Houston area last week that it's kind of changed things up a little bit over there with a lot of muddy water in the, uh, the hazards and of course a lot of this stuff's running off now into the bayous making that also very pasty and then of course with luck all this water will make it into the bay and kind of balance off the uh, the water salinity and, and change the temperature just a little bit make the fishing a little more interesting there in the northern reaches of the gulf of mexico and the bay system i also fished last week uh, last week when i got back here in north texas and the uh, little release below ray roberts in the rain and cold and there was no activity there whatsoever no other fishermen there so that tells you something right away of course um, it's a cold day here in North Texas temperatures now are just probably breaking 30 degrees we've had to crack the ice off the chicken water and the dog water outside today and so it's a it's a lot colder than uh, than I like it of course growing up in South Texas in the Rio Grande Valley you get a little bit used to the warm weather down there there's a lot of changes coming up with Texas Flycaster and the website. Uh, you know, you've been told about these kind of in advance. If you read and read the website and the stories there, you realize it's really not a blog. It's more of an ongoing news uh, capsule for people who are interested in fly fishing all over Texas. Anyway, that is going to uh, un encounter some changes in looks and, the, and functions and everything else. The pay-per-view reading is pretty much turned on, although I've got another 1,200 stories to go through and decide whether they're going to be free reading or monetized pay-per-view reading. Really affordable, I think, and uh, you should you should consider getting an annual subscription uh, or just pay your dime and, and see what you want to read and nothing else. We're going to bring back the Water Wednesday um, segment. I don't know if we'll be able to do it every Wednesday because it's very burdensome to gather information from the government and places like that for Water Wednesday, but that's coming back in 2015 because I did have a lot of people saying they like to read that, and the numbers prove that uh, Water Wednesday, uh, information about Texas supply and demand of water, is uh, very popular to read about. There's also a new segment coming out this year called Mind, Body, and Soul, and it's about other aspects that... We can, we're going to plug into fly fishing and see how they cross over with it's mind things, body conditioning, which I need worse than anyone, and uh, the soul searching that goes along with so much of fly fishing. Um, not unlike some other sports, but a lot unlike some other sports. There just seems to be a, a deep, deep connection to the soulful side of fly fishing, and whether it's finding new things to read or talk about when it comes to the soul. I think we're going there this year. But why not? Um, also, in, in recent history, we're going to be doing a lot more crossover stories about the Airstream trailer. Uh, that's going to be our home away from home, our base of operations, and, and a unique way to um, provide information to people watching or reading from the locations that we go to with the Airstream trailer. Uh, for years, I've had a blog type thing, more of a blog, um, about the Airstream. It's at airstreamdiary.com, so you might take a look at that. Uh, definitely there's going to be some crossover where I write stories on Airstreams here that cross over to that blog. So it's just one of those things that uh, they're, they're apparently increasing in popularity. Production is up at the factory and we're going to go ahead and, and kind of put the paddles to that and see what we can do with uh, Airstreams here as well as on AirstreamDiary.com. We're going to spend a little bit of this first part of the year kind of going through what all happened last year, whether it was the uh, abbreviated fly fishing for carp season that we had, the search for uh, skiff, which was kind of a, a 
stop and start affair with other people involved in the mix and then we're going to also uh, carry forward with the search for some type of skiff for fly fishing in fresh water and occasionally in salt water. We'll see how that goes. Um, what else do I have here? Uh, you know, we we'll always have reports coming blended in with all this other information from wherever we go, so stick with me and let's just see where this thing ends up this year. It's going to be an interesting year, kind of a make or break it year for the situation here at Ray Roberts. Um, we're in our fourth year of drought. It's going to be a, a whole lot of uh, looking and photographs and things like that to document what's going on with the drought and we'll just see how that all turns out. It's uh, something that there's no need for you to come up and try to fish Ray Roberts if there's no fish and even no water. So we'll, we'll just keep our eye on that because that's my backyard and see what else is going on throughout the state when it comes to uh, other opportunities to fish for carp and other places. I've got a tip of the day. A, a couple of tips, you know. The weather has is, is definitely changed and so I wanted to uh, definitely show you some things that have worked for me in the past when I started off in, in working for newspapers and photography I used to have to shoot football games in the ice cold weather like we have here in North Texas and I learned to use layers. First layer and this is about layers for those of you that haven't fished in the cold should be something like silk or silks some kind of you know wicking layer even your underwear you know man-made not cotton to wick the sweat off your body then your middle layer would be Capoline. This is these are <laughs> these are the first heavy duty uh, long underwear that I bought when I went to work for the newspaper back in 1988. These are made in the USA Patagonia Capolines, and that's your middle layer. And then of course your clothing is your outer layer, and that just depends on what you're up to, you know. But you want that to continue that wicking action, and then your top layer or your outer wear should be if you're if you're capable, you know, some kind of breathable fabric like Gore-Tex or something like that. Just moisture that's constantly coming off of you escape. And we're all about letting the moisture escape and that keeps the warmth in. Of course, hat, keep your head warm because that's the number one, probably the number one place we lose heat is off our head. So if you got a hat that goes down like this, that's great. Keeps you warm. And then of course the other extremities, hands. I like the uh, Sims glove right here. It's a mitten type thing that kind of folds over your fingers. If you need your thumb out, you can do that. These are great because it gathers those fingers together in here. And that's uh, extraordinarily uh, effective for keeping your hands warm. Another thing that I do is, is since I you know, started cycling years ago, I'll, I'll go to the cycle shops and find layers that I like too. So this is one that's uh, actually, I don't know who makes the glove, but it, Manzella. So it's, uh, it's a foreign company that makes these gloves. I think it's one of the layers for cycling and then of course the Pearl Azumis for uh, your outer layer. I use these the most when it comes to fly fishing because that keeps the water off and that inner layer keeps it warm and since there is a layer there's some air in there and it really these really really work well. Newcomer to the hands is Kinko's. Got a pair of these for Christmas. Uh, not exactly a fly fishing glove but it is waterproofable according to what I was told and I tell you what you put these on you feel like you chop wood for a week in Colorado snow that apparently Kinko's are a big time Colorado thing and uh, anyway I'm gonna give those a try so that's your layers another thing you got to do when you're when you're out and you're in overcast which we're not today it's a sunny clear day but if you get over to someplace like the Blue River or Broken Bow you know Beaver's Bend you're going to want to be able to see in overcast conditions or when a front comes through and that's when you switch to the copper or kind of yellow colored glasses and that that'll brighten up and pump up the colors as you uh, as you fish in overcast conditions and make it also of course polarized so you can see under the water as well and i hope you guys have a great week this week i know that uh, we're going to have a lot of changes here and uh, one of the other changes that I've just mentioned at the very last is we're going to probably move the Monday fishing report, the Texas fishing report, from Monday to Thursday or Friday. And that will allow you guys to uh, get more fresh information 
about fly fishing conditions in Texas because a lot of you guys fish on the weekend and I'm just one of those people that gets to fish a lot during the week. So look forward to that coming next week. I'll probably put out a video this week on on just to kind of follow up on this, this part of the whole thing. And once again, thanks for watching. Thanks to my sponsors. Have a great week and we'll talk to you soon.